What's happening? It's your girl, International Most P, without the T, baby, DJ Most Precious, the founder of MostPreciousPromotes.com, as well as The Hot Zone, the number one place to sit down and tell all the sweetness, you know? And also, shout out to Podcast Delights. If you want to get your own podcast, make your own podcast, talk your own smack, well, this is where you do it. Anchor by Spotify. Salute to you all. Make sure you tell them DJ Most Precious sent you. Anchor, get your podcast today. What's up? It's your girl, Tisha Campbell, and you're tuned in to the Hot Zone. Yeah. Yeah. You feel it? Uh. We winning in this world today. Uh. Ain't nobody gonna take a fame. We going in. So what's happening, man? This is your girl, International Most P for All New in the Hot Zone. This is actually season three. We at the home of the Hot Zone right here at MPP Studios, based way in Illinois, Alton. But, I mean, I'm from St. Louis, so it's kind of like that that median, that crossway. But today we got a special, special, special honoree guest in the house. I got to say special three times, maybe even a million more because he's that special. All the way from... I don't know. St. He's from, Louis. I'm born just messing, and I'm messing. <laughs> <laughs> All the way from the Lou Man, the Show Me State himself, man. We got yes, Jamarco Britton. What's happening? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? It's it's been one. So how's your day been? It's been pretty cool. Okay, okay. I'm tired. I'm tired. Why? I ain't what's gonna up? lie. I what, ain't how, gonna you lie. Been, how, what? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> what they say you Love, sleep when man. you die you know you sleep when you dead type oh, of so. mm, <laughs> i am a <laughs> avid opposer to that oh god i know i know I avid know. opposer to that i know i know i i, I work i hustle <laughs> i hustle very hard i work very hard and Keep- i don't be feeling the greatest when i don't get the chance to sleep I am a big advocate of sleep. I, I used to be running the running the streets all day, staying out two, three, four, five in the morning, and then getting up and trying to hit it again. Can't do it no more. I've been up since three this morning, working, hustling, you know, making my rounds, and uh, you know now I'm here. I got you know my night going in probably around. 11, 11, 12. 12. A whole new day. A whole new day. <laughs> Running into each other. And like I, Yeah, then I got to get up tomorrow morning and hit it at 3 again. Oh, my goodness. Know, it's, so. the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the grind to yeah. help. It's like you grind until you don't have to grind as much anymore. Yes, Or indeed. you grind until you don't have to tell people who you are. What's that saying? It's something like that. Like, you you just put in enough work where you're comfortable, in a yeah. sense. So, um, I like to say, like, what is a normal day? Well, kind of time, you kind of said that, but you didn't. So, like, what is a normal day for Jamarco? All right. What well, normal? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So normal day. So I, I, I change it up from the first time yeah, that you asked. Yes, yes. Well, just give more detail. So yes. I wake up. Thank you, thank you, all right. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Th- thank you for waking me up. Yes, every day, you know every what I'm day. Saying? Always got to give thanks. You know, I usually tell it to myself. All right, I got to wake up, and I need to read some scripture, and then I move and get out of bed. That's what I'm talking about. That's I don't what I'm do talking that. about. You know, I don't do that every day, but at the very least. <laughs> I got to say thank you. Yes. And then I got to make my bed. <laughs> I get out. <laughs> for real. For real. I, is, it like, is it like, I mean, I was taught to make my bed when I get up. But it's actually a saying with that. You know, you make the bed, you lay in, right? So, yeah. like, you the first. I, well, I haven't heard anybody say, yeah, I wake up and I make my bed. Some people get out and leave their bed messy. Yeah. I, I, I used to do that when I was a little boy. Uh, when I was a little boy, <laughs> it used to be a, a back and forth thing with me and my mother. <laughs> You know, I mean, like, what's the point of making the bed if I'm laying back? When I'm about in to it. get back in it, <laughs> but then you get older and you realize you need to put things in order. Yeah, and you don't want things to just be messy yep. all the time. Yep, that's exactly and why. There's no point in waiting around to fix the bed when you could just do it right <laughs> then and there. So when you come home and you're ready to lay in it, I'm t- t- turn the blanket over, turn the sheet over, and, and get I'm, right I'm in it. Right, I'm getting right in the bed. Wow, that's that's simple. You know. Like that means that's a philosophy too. But we we can talk about that all day, every day. Because I'm a philosopher sometimes, yeah. and I think you are too, just by how you how you move and groove and how you look at things. But yeah, the rest of your day, I was just chimed in on this making oh, the yeah, bed yeah. part. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a real thing though. <laughs> it's it's it, it, we can get philosophical on it. We can get philosophical on it. But you know, I make my bed. 
you know, clean my body, go to the gym every other day. Yeah. And then I get to work, mm. you know, and get to work. I'm currently in this coding boot camp, you know, learning web wow. development. Yes, <laughs> trying I seen to that. Like, <laughs> I seen it. Try to just continue learning, you know, different things. Which is um, good because it actually makes you unstoppable. Yeah. Like, like I know, I don't know a lot of people if they took the pandemic as an experience. Like, it took you a chance to really sit back, reevaluate, replan for next time it doesn't happen that way. A lot of people didn't have jobs. They got fired. They got this. They were homeless. They, a lot of people should took that moment to, like, really better themselves. And that yeah. could be any aspect, like going to school for coding. I actually decided to go to real estate school. So it, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy as ever. Yeah. But, like, while we're talking about school, what did you um study when you – were away in New York in, co- in college yeah. yeah I studied music business see I, I yeah. tried to I had initially Chinese. went and auditioned to be uh, in their vocal music program wow but I got denied I'm wow. like you know that's cool yeah I can you know I can take a no yeah you know what I'm saying they ain't never stopped me but then I saw other people who got and you like into the program I'm like damn I know I can sing better than them <laughs> And so I don't know if it was like a numbers thing, right. you know, there's different like vocal classifications. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know what it was, but it didn't really matter. I, you know, went to school for music business, went there for a year, um, had to come back home because my financial aid did not cover mm-hmm. all of my tuition. And yeah. they admitted me without telling me that all of my tuition wasn't covered. And, and you know, I don't have dead. no knowledge my parents didn't go to school. Their parents didn't go to, uh, you know, school. And so nobody knew what was going on. Right. You know, and so I had to pack my shit up and come back, you know, to St. Louis. <laughs> but, you know, that didn't stop me. I took the uh, the knowledge and experiences that I gained and just applied it to everything that I was doing here in St. Louis. Yeah. Um, And it's uh, benefited me a lot. A lot of the relationships that I gained during my time there. Uh, I'm still, you using know, them, yeah. you know, using those relationships today, you know, for, you know, personal reasons, mm-hmm. you know, personal, I still have friends from there. And then people that I do business with, you know, Are from there. That, so like, that was your, that was your reason for going. If you think yeah. about it, like, yeah, I didn't get in this program where I intended to, but a God had another plan for it all in. Like, yeah. If you, if I know we can look at it that way. I mean, some people just don't have that type of mindset yeah, to I look actually, at these type of situations in that way. Yeah. You actually yeah. what? You actually what? What you actually what? Oh, I was just going to say I uh moved back down there to live for a period of time. Wow. Yeah, and so I have, you know, fell in love with it that much. You Damn, know. you moved back. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, the music, the the food, the culture, it was great. And then I had some weird experiences <laughs> me and my partner, you know, they you know the 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 voodoo and the witchcraft and all that stuff, it's 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 real, it's real? deal. Holy okay. field down okay. there. So that's that's another thing. Like we we see it, we know the history, but like to hear it from somebody be like, Yeah, this is real, real. Yeah. You start to believe it a little bit more. Yeah, it's real deal. Holy field, man. Me a funny story, me and my partner, uh he's from St. Louis as well. He's a saxophone player. He's still living down there. But we were down there some years ago. And um, at that time, we were both doing photography. Okay. And we were, you know, smoking. Smoking getting high. It's like 1 o'clock in the morning. And we was like, all right, let's go out and take some pictures. And so we drive, drive. Then we come uh, across this park. You got a, a dope fog coming out of it. Oh, my goodness. And so we go into the park. And it's like you got to kind of walk down this certain area. You got to walk down to the grass and get into it. And... uh the fog is thick. And thick so fog. I'm down at the bottom of this hill or this yeah. park and he's up on the top and I'm sitting here, you know, trying to take pictures of far. I don't know what I, I don't know what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? But he's like, bruh, turn around, bruh, bruh, turn around. And like something was approaching me out of coming out of the fog. And I, I turned around and I looked and I could not make out what it was. That's, Mm. I couldn't make out what it was, and it it had like lights on it. This is a this is a it's true scary. It's not like Halloween true in, story. in May right now. It had lights on it, and it was moving in a motion like this, just up and down. This is scary. It's moving really slowly. You trying to scare me right now? 
And so <laughs> I turn around, I'm, like, I'm looking like, what the hell? So I get to running up the hill. <laughs> and so we, my car parked like a, a block down the street. So we get to running, mm, hitting it. So we looking back, the thing is still coming and it's, it's, it's chasing us down the street mm -mm -mm. and still could not make out what it was. I'll hop in the car, you know, hit the ignition. This nigga tried to hop in. He got one leg out, out my foot already on the gas. <laughs> so <laughs> he had his leg out the car and I'm doing, he like this, he, he sliding with the damn car. I'm like, man, we got to get the hell out of here. Cause I don't know what was going on. So I'm hitting like 80 down this street. Hitting like 80 down the street. And I'm still seeing this thing in my rearview mirror coming down the street chasing us. I, until this day, I don't know what so, that was. Oh, my goodness. I have no. Oh, my goodness. But I had experiences like that. And I was like, mm, I'm, I'm, I'm finna be up out of here. So now you got me wanting to talk about a ghost story. <laughs> I'm going to be happy to see you. She, you want to say something? So I, I got. No. So. <laughs> Oh my, yeah, I don't. So yeah. I'm in my, I'm probably about her age, about nine, I think. Uh, my my niece's age is nine, and I was standing at my auntie's house on the Tasca on the south side, mm -hmm. and apparently this house had a hundred story before she decides to buy it. Yeah. So we we move in, she move in, and like my cousins, they all have their own stories, like how they seen an old man looking over the bed and all this stuff. We don't believe it, right? Until it actually yeah. physically happened to you. So. One night I stayed over, my big cousin was watching me, um, and I was sleeping upstairs. There's a staircase from upstairs to take you down to the second level, then you at the basement level. Um, apparently, I was asleep. I've never said these type of stories. It's a family tale. Like, when we having dinner, we all talk about yeah. these type of stories. So, now it's on the podcast. But uh, I'm walking. Apparently, I ended up downstairs in the basement after sleeping. I don't sleepwalk. Never slept walk. Yeah. So how do I sleepwalk and walk all the way down the steps without falling or know I'm doing it? So I, apparently I was sleepwalking. I end up in the basement. I remember this day like it was yesterday. I walked all the way to the back where the furnace and all that stuff is in the basement. Weird ass old type of house. It's my 1800 built. Yeah. A cellar. All this little weird creepy stuff that I probably would not have went to on a normal day. I walked down there and something like I woke up. I was walking to something. I woke up and I'm like, where am I at? Last time I knew I was in the bed. Then I realized I started screaming. I started crying. I was freaking terrified. No lights was on. It was yeah. dark as hell down there. So I'm trying to feel, find my way back to the steps. So I ended up finding my way back to the door. The, 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 the part of this story is the door does not lock from downstairs. Yeah. It locks from upstairs. So I'm knocking on the door trying to figure out why is the door locked? Yeah. So apparently whatever happened, whoever happened, if I was possessed, whatever, I cannot say because I don't know. I don't sleepwalk. I never did. Apparently, the ghost is playing a trick on me because they played tricks on my other cousins while they were there. Yeah, maybe it was the kid ghost that came up there, woke me up, took me downstairs, yeah. trying to tell me something, and then locked me in the basement where I'm banging on the door once I'm awake. And they, yeah. So I don't want to take over the interview, but you were yeah. talking about that spookiness, and it just segue one of my horror stories hey. is why I do believe there are ghosts. Oh, yeah. Because I that story alone just is not something that people make up. So, so um, yeah, now I'm creeped out. Like, what the hell? Now we're talking about creepy shit, and I'm like, yeah. what the freak? <laughs> but, yeah, so you you went and moved back to New Orleans. And now, um, from there, what was next? Like, what did you do after you moved there, and then you came here? Like, what, what so happened? Talk I, about I it. Moved, I moved there, and, you know, things were going cool. I was starting to get, you know, acclimated in a different kind of way outside of the school environment. Then my mother got really sick, and um, your mother's here, right, St. Louis? Yeah, she's here, and you know it was looking like it may be, serious. you know, really serious and uh, fatal. And so I just packed myself up and came back to St. Louis, you know, and uh, I've been back here ever since, just working, just working, doing the most that I can to invest here in the scene, and yeah. you know, invest in myself. I don't plan to be here. Okay. Forever, of course, nobody do. Well, some you know? people do. Actually, I can't say that. And you know, at least uh, living wise, you know, yeah, you know, ideal thing. You know, I have me a spot here. You know, this is where most of my family is. Then I'll probably be living somewhere else primarily. Yeah, buy buy a place here, rent it out, all that. Yeah, yeah all that, yeah, all that type you know? mogul move type deal. Yeah. 
So like we 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 segued into like I didn't talk about how the interviews are broken up. They're broken up into three different topics. It's mm-hmm. hot topics, hot spices, hot juices. Right now we're in the hot topics part where we talk about all Jamarco, anything Jamarco, funny stories, scary no. stories, your experiences, and segue into your next chapters of your life, which is obviously your university. Um, and so much more, actually, your your take on how you are inspiring and impacting the community, all community, not just it is music, but for music, you you impact uh, mentorship and kids. Like it's so much more that comes in with what we consider one way. Like, yeah, I'm impacting the music scene, but you impacting the, the future to come. You impacting kids that want to be in the music scene and you inspiring entrepreneur. It's so much stuff that goes on with what you do. Um, that's why I don't want to just segue into the music business out of it. But like, let's talk about how Jamarco came, like who, like Jamarco at first. Like, I'm gonna just tell a little bit about it before we get into the hot spices. So I met you when you were a part of a group. Um, as I learned what the name was just a few minutes ago, yeah. MME. What does MME stand for? It stands for Musical Masterminds Entertainment. Which is even crazier because a lead our a lead artist, uh, mastermind. I never knew that was like the middle. Wow. So, like, we talk about Mastermind being the leader of it and how MME is where it is now, um, which is... He didn't always go by Mastermind. He did not. I only know yeah, Mastermind. He, yeah, he changed his stage name to Mastermind. Wow. Yeah, well, before it was just Mo or Mo Tracks. I think I remember Mo Tracks. His producer Mo Tracks. What? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And, like, how did y'all all meet? Like, first of all, it was five of them. I didn't even let him tell y'all that. It was five of them. How did y'all all meet? So... I went to school with two of the members, Dante Wolf and Amir. Wolf, wow. And so we were in high school together. Yeah. Us two. Uh, no, and then uh, uh, another one, three of us, or well, I guess four, including me, and then uh, Khan. Okay. And so, I remember Khan. Yeah, and so he was, we all went to high school with one another. Amir and Mastermind are childhood best friends. They I grew remember. literally grew up. Wow. You know, their parents all together and they've been knowing each other for forever. And they were doing uh, music with one another. And eventually, you know, we all got introduced to Muhammad, Mastermind. Yes. And then we all just started doing music with one another. And it kind of just took on from there. So y'all performed at big stages. Y'all were part of the Slum Fest, STL, St. Louis underground music scene. Y'all did what? Y'all did tour? Like, I, I don't, yeah. I'm just chiming in because I know this, but like, I'm going to let him tell, like, what are some of your most memorable moments with MME? Right. So, like you were saying, we went on, you know, two national tours uh, that we funded and then uh, the community here in St. Louis helped us fund. Mm-hmm. And so we were able to, Pack it up. We rented a, uh, you know, a truck. What? And just got to driving and got to performing. You know, we had some contacts in some other cities. And we were really doing it. We were sending emails, contacting people in other places. Like, hey, we trying to come to your city to perform. You know, uh, you're reaching out to other artists who were in other places and trying to do show swaps and different things like that. And we were making it happen. You know, we, wow. we you know, uh, we was really doing like all like self uh what they call it DIY yeah do, <laughs> do it, it yourself. yourself yeah we were uh, burning CDs of our music <laughs> and taking little cardboard uh pieces uh cardboard sheets and drawing on them and those were like the album covers <laughs> for wow. our music and we were selling those at the different shows that we were performing and each one of them was custom made wow. by us like we did some pretty interesting things we got the chance to open up for Chance the Rapper Ab Soul um Man, uh, Slum Village, uh, uh, a few of the folks, a few of the members got the chance to open up for Currency. Mm. I wasn't on that show, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. We yeah. got, got the chance to open up for Odyssey. Um, me personally, I got the chance to open up for uh, Terrence Blanchard, okay. big jazz musician, uh, Teresa Janae. Ooh. You know, that was like a, a big thing for yeah, me as a Teresa's solo big artist. Yeah, too, like... Yeah, she's she's really big, and uh, it was pretty big for me because I was the only singer in a hip hop group, and it's it true. was like a lot of always like you know, man, y'all niggas ain't feeling me, you know, y'all <laughs> yeah, y'all a yeah, different kind yeah. of thing. I ain't trying to hear all that rapity rap rap stuff, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even though you know, being around them, I had started to rap and mm-hmm. you know do the 
do that, you know, but they wasn't really on the same vibe just because I'm coming with it in a different kind of way. That's true. That's true. And so I got the chance to step out as my own as a individual artist and got to accomplish some great things. So it's been pretty good. And like, that, that stuff we don't know. Like, I guess, yeah, I didn't know. But there's other stuff behind the scenes that we don't know. Like, so that segues into your university. Like, you can you take your experiences yeah. and literally build a whole new experience of DIYs, which that's usually how you get on, get to the level you want to be is by doing it yourself. Like, yeah, yeah, you can rely on other people, which is a bad, bad thing in the stigma in the industry, is to rely and have your hands out versus coming to the table with something and building yeah. with somebody. So the fact that you guys did that, wow, that's that's some historic. Like if it was documented, if y'all had that documented, that'll be like had, a Kanye West yeah, documentary. We had a lot of stuff documented, but I don't know if we still have yeah. the files rather than the videographers and yeah, the photographers. That's true. That's true. That's true. So that's probably like yeah. if I if I would have thought what I thought now to document everything, I probably had a shitload of like I probably would have. 30 years of footage if I decided to break it up or maybe 10 or 15 seasons of freaking footage. Yeah. So yeah, that is very crucial is to be able to capture every moment because our memories are going to leave eventually, right? So we're not going to have every detail of everything when we get older. And yeah. then stuff's going to replace it. We're going to forget it, all that. So having it documented is, like, documented is good. So like, we talked about that and we're going to segue in it because I want to make sure I tackle as much about you as I can. Now we're mm -hmm. going to talk to Hot Spices, which is talking about Soul Shed and Soul Shed University. Right. And with this, is this more about just really telling us about it? I really don't have many questions on it. I just really want you to like take this moment and really dissect your journey. How'd you get there? What it stands for? What is next? How people can tap in with it? This is all this section is about. So tell us about Soul Shed. All right. So Soul Shed, to sum it up really quickly. Oh, no. Why yeah. sum it up really quick? Well, go, you know, go, go ahead. Go you ahead. know, this, this is stuff that I've been working on. You know, I've been <laughs> uh, applying for grants and looking at pitch competitions. And, you know, they want you to be able to speak about your business. Oh, that's true. That's true. Let's go, you go, know, go Give right me your pitch. Bat, Give me your pitch. Hey, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. But Soul Shed is a music community organization mm -hmm. And we develop opportunities and resources for musicians and people who love music. Mm -hmm. And so what that looks like is our flagship program, Social University. Uh, it's a you know, artist development curriculum where we partner with music and uh, general business professionals to teach musicians about the music industry and then also mm -hmm. how to handle their business just as general business people. Wow. Um, and this also includes, aside from that, jam sessions, uh, live concerts, karaoke events. Uh, we have events that are geared towards producers, beat makers to come and just make beats, have fun. And just for people. And um, we also had a support group for a period of time uh, where we would just invite people to just come and talk about the, the things that they were facing, you know, personally as artists and as people. And so just creating the, that space for people to develop, you know, in this particular creative lane of music is what we're all about. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. It's, it's, it's crazy how life brings you back into real realm because everything that you are doing is what I'm tapping into. Um, I wanted to do a DJ program um, also with segues with what you do with Soul Shares. So I'm hoping we can probably partner because it would make it make more sense um bring this support group back and all that type of stuff so yeah we're gonna talk about more of that uh on partnering if that invite is offered but like i i'm inspired by soul shed um ever since i had a chance to tap back in to you mm -hmm. which we went separate ways right if linkedin wasn't there i probably oh, would, you the one traveling the world i know i know <laughs> i know but i never like look where i'm at like yeah. This ain't where I want to end. Don't get me wrong. Oh, I definitely don't yeah. want to end in St. Louis. I moved to Texas in 2017. Um, and then came back when the pandemic hit type deal. But Man, ain't nothing wrong with coming home. Yeah, it ain't. But that yeah. it kind of felt like a, a setback in a sense. Because like, okay, you left. Now you come back to the crib. You know what I mean? It's like coming back, all that. I, I get that mentality. I got yeah. it. I'm over it now because yeah. I travel so much. So I'm going to have to come back somewhere, right? Yeah. But then... Then at that time I'm like I don't want to come back. 
Yeah. Cause you leave, come back, the city look at you differently. Like you left, but now you back. I started caring. I was caring too much about others. Yeah. Versus where I am now. I gave two shits. So yeah. comes with growth. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. I, we can I, face that together because you yeah. left and you came back home for family reasons, um, yeah. which is also part of mine. But yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I had that exact, I had this that exact conversation with a, 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 a former partner of mine when I was down there. I'm like, man, I don't want to go back because then I feel like I've you know failed my reason for coming here. Yeah, but I moved away. <laughs> <laughs> like I accomplished. What I said I was going to that's do. True, that's true. You know, establish more relationships, went down there, did what I needed to do. Now it's just this particular season in life calls for me to be in this particular place, you know, and I'm wow. also coming back to the city, uh, not a different person, but a more experienced person. That's I have true. more things to, I have a larger worldview, um, you know, mm. to provide to the people that yes. I'm, you know, was familiar with before I left. That's and true. I'm coming back and like, hey, things is different when you get somewhere <laughs> else. I know. <laughs> that, that small mind is now yeah. big as hell. And it, you come in with different ideas, different ways, different maneuvers, different perspectives of how to imply or implement what you always wanted to do. Yeah. So like me leaving this, this MPP Studios was like a spare of the moment type deal. Like yeah. I've always been in production my company was called is called Most Precious Promotions and Production. Never did really much in the production side. So here I am, over ten years later, pandemic twenty twenty one. Um, here it is. Like I yeah. opened it just on some let's do it type deal. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I we've been through that. We've been through that together. I don't think that no more because I really don't care. Yeah. But I'm a little bit. I'm more patient with understanding where I'm supposed to be. Where yeah. if I'm there, it's where I'm supposed to be. Not, oh, man, I failed. I should have did this. I shouldn't have did that. No, I'm exactly where I should be, where God wants me to be. And I'm still learning. We all know that. We don't have the vision <laughs> of where yeah. God wants us. We just land where he wants us sometimes. Yeah. So we just got to know the difference type deal. So we talk about soul shit. And do you have any big projects, any big events, anything that you want to advertise that is like, I guess, on a consecutive amount or just how to find it? Like, is it a website? Like... Mm -hmm. Oh, they talk to us. Yeah. So right now we're on a hiatus. Um, we had won a grant from the Arts and Education Council mm -hmm. in October of 2021. Ooh. Um, and throughout from October 2021 to March of this year, we were doing our programming in their space, the Centene Center uh, in Midtown. Yes. Um, and since we've been out of there, we've been on pause. Trying to figure out new yeah, places? Just, yeah, okay. trying to figure out, you know, just reconstruct the uh, the entire business structure okay um you know because prior to that we were doing our programming in herb arts okay and the next step for associate will be getting a place of our own yes yes you know um doesn't have to be Big. super you know huge but just a place that is functional and we're able to do what we need to do to you know set the foundation for that next level of having, you know, that super big facility here in St. Louis yes. that's, uh, you know, churning out and developing people and artists in a way that, you know, St. Louis hasn't seen in quite a while. That would be dope. You know? And so be dope. we're in the process of that, you know, trying to um, put together all the details to do fundraising, what the, what the business plan looks like as we're begin reaching out, doing pitch competitions and applying for more grants and different things like that. And so that, that is the stage that we're in right now. You know, I want to continue to be able to provide value to the music culture here. Mm -hmm. um, but it has to be right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it yes. has to be right. A lot of what I, a, a lot of what I learned uh, while I was on going through this grant process or this, you know, you know, going through this process with the Arts and Education Council, um, is that it's a, you got to have your business affairs in order. Oh, of course, yes. You got to have your business yes. affairs in order. And um, it takes learning those things. And it's, uh, it's only so long that you can do things on a whim. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. It's only so long 
you know, and uh, I don't want Soul Share to be something that skyrockets and then just completely just falls. That's true. You no, know, I want it to be right. And if it takes a little bit more time, I'm um, getting to where we want to be. It'll just take more time. Of course, of course. Don't rush time. You don't rush perfection. So um, just keep building up. Keep talking about it. Obviously, what you're doing and. and Somebody might live say, hey, I'll donate you a space. You know, like, it's what you're doing for the culture. It's amazing. So before we get um, into, the, well, before we exit out of this amazing podcast, we're going into the hot juices part. Hot juices is basically the thirst. You kind of tag, tag, tagged into that a little bit when you talked about what's next with soul shit. But, like, let's talk about um, a little bit more. Like, with said, with soul shit, it's a university as well, right? Like, it's, or is it, it, it the name of it is Soul Shed University or is it Soul Shed? So the umbrella uh, organization term is Soul Shed. Okay. Soul Shed University is our flagship program Ooh. that we have for artists. Okay. Okay. And so, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, when I was going through a, like applying for a lot of grants. Yeah. You know, they kept on getting mixed up, but Shed <laughs> is like the old, the under- so, so Shed is what's on the, the, the government papers. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I, and then you got the different segues, the flagships, the, the programs. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I just wanted to say, so you just said the record straight today. Like, yes, right now, look, yes. look, so Shed is the umbrella, and then you got that. So that's just what MPP is, to MPP's most press promotions. MPP Studios is a flag under that main umbrella. Yeah. I understood it when you said it. I just wanted to make sure that I clarified it, and it's stressed on the interview as well. So we in the hot juices. All right. Mm, 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 mm. All right. Hot, hot topic juices. that you there. Yeah, hot juices. Like people all like right. I, I changed it because I'm like I wanted to be spicy. So mm. I'm all about the vibes. And then why not have some stuff to be like hot juices? Who wants to drink hot juices? If you're thirsty, you gonna drink anything that's in front of you. People drink warm temperature water, like room temperature water. That's so. not what I thought about. Oh, what? Hot juice. Oh, you thinking nasty? Oh, oh my goodness. But no, it can be okay. that. It could be that. So basically, if you <laughs> go on a Let's date, not go there. If you go, no, if you go on a date with anybody, who would it be? That's usually that's literally what this topic is. With anybody? Yeah, with anybody. If you can go on a date with anybody, any day, it ain't even gotta be no no that type of day. It can be just like, hey, I just wanna go have coffee. Who would it be? Like Hmm. Mm. <laughs> and that's a good one. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. I'm making it even more spicier. Ooh wee! Wow. Hmm. Ooh wee! Ooh wee! Who would I want to learn from? Ooh, that's what you. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Uh, hmm. Good one. That's a tough question. So we can segue back into that. I want you to give us three words that describe you, Jamarco. Oh wow. Three words. Now you're going to ask me a question to describe yourself. Yeah, I'm going to mess you up right <laughs> like now. Like, that's an easier question. Now it is. No. Yeah, I can do it. But no, I like... if Okay, your legacy. Maybe that might be I, a little I, easier. I can do three words. Okay, see, I knew you I, could. Yeah, you just I, making I, it hard on me like... I, yeah. Well, go ahead. I what? can do three words. I would say passionate, honest, And dedicated. See, that wasn't that bad. It's it's million other words that can describe <laughs> you, but that gives a roam. So as goes with this date question. So now we're getting that you would go on a date with, but also those who might listen, like, I'll go on a date with him too. He's this, this, this. Yeah. So I'm just building a profile right now for you for in, for the hot juices dating site. No, I'm oh, okay, just okay, laughing. Okay. Okay. I am in a relationship. Uh, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. But no, like, well, then there, you're, there's your date right there. But no, like on, but I like how you said it, like, that you want to learn from. Like I said, it's not a day that you like got to be intimate day. Yeah. It could be like just somebody you want to go have a chop it up with or learn. Like if you can go sit down with Martin Luther King, would you? You know what I mean? That type of deal. Like it doesn't have to be sexual. Just to want to clarify people listening to the interview. Like, yeah. hey, she nasty. No, he has a, he has, he's in a relationship. But no, even if he's in a relationship, date still were like, it can be a professional yeah. date, be a friendship date, association. So who would it be? I'll start mine off. It would be with Aaliyah. I would want to sit down Aaliyah? and have a session with Aaliyah, Pac, and Biggie. Because first of all, I want to understand Biggie. But I'm more of a Pac fan. But like them and then also Maya Angelou. Mm. So if I had the chance to sit and go on a date or just go be in their element, those would be the four. Mm, mm, mm. Good ones. I just gave four because I 
yeah, those are the ones I would go even if I didn't ask that question. <laughs> it's a little easier question for me because I thought about it. <laughs> In advance. I'm cheating. Huh. I could probably give a better answer with some thought. But somebody that comes to mind right now, there's this uh, guy that's on uh, social media. His name is Jeremy Lynch. Okay. Content creator, but he does all of these just crazy dope content. Yeah. And I would love to just, uh, I would love to really under, you know, be an understudy for him. He does a lot of um, video production. He's a musician as well. Ooh. Has this, you know, big, beautiful studio creating this, all this great music. Um, and then the content that he creates is really innovative and some of the best Wow. That I've seen as far as like video production and editing. Wow. And, um, you know, I'm interested in all of those things. You know, aside from music, I do graphic design. I'm an artist. I draw. I, you know, write. I write scripts. Uh, you know, know do video editing. Like, I'm into all of that different kinds of stuff. I think stuff. I remember because I, I think, no, I had sent it to somebody else to write a script for I Need. Mm. Yeah. So maybe you can write a script and we yeah. write a, what'd you call it? It's not a script. What do you call it when you write making a video? Uh, no, what is it called? Is it a script a when video? you write a video? Yeah, it could be a script or you could uh, write out a storyboard. Yeah, storyline. Yeah. Okay, got you. But back to you. My bad. I was like, I forgot about that part of you. Well, I didn't know. I didn't recall you having that part of your talent, which you are very talented, but now I can tap into it. That's all. Yeah. That's all I was saying. Like, hey, you did what? Okay, cool. Yeah. And so. I, you know, I did, yeah, this would be someone that I would uh, love to meet and love to work with. Okay. You know, I think that would be pretty cool. And, you know, I always wanted, like, some mentors. Mm -hmm. I, I It seems like in my life I've always had to be, like, the person that's, yeah, you know. That is being the mentor. Yeah, and... um I don't really have a relationship with like my two older brothers. Yeah, understood. And uh, you know, I just always, you know, back in my group, uh, MME, they used to call me Pops because I was like <laughs> the oldest, the soul. old head, <laughs> and the sensible one that wasn't into all of the foolishness. <laughs> and uh, you know, it'd be nice to have a mentor who has kind of traversed mm -hmm. some of the paths that I'm on right now. And just really be able to, hey, you know, pick up the phone. This is what I got going on. These are the ideas that I have. Oh, this is a new project that I've been working on. What do you think about that? You know, right. I think that would be cool. You know, and I haven't had that experience in life. And I'm getting older now. And you sound like pops right yeah, now. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm getting older now. And it's even more apparent that I'm older, you know, because I'm out. I'm still involved in the scene. And then there's people coming up. They're 18, 19 20 i'm like wow yeah you get to sit back and oh be my god yeah. imagine how i feel we oh. in the same age bracket right now imagine how i yeah, feel yeah i'm like dude we not the same it's it's a different thing and it's like you know people having new experiences they were getting excited about these different things and he's like oh yeah you know that's cool yeah you know I, you know I, I remember that feeling that was that was pretty cool you sound like an old yeah. man like man then that's the testimony that we have to give um, for them. Like, yeah, we've been here. This is what we did. This, do you remember this? Because, you know, their favorite artist is this new one. But ours are like yeah. the classics, the old school. But also, if you find an artist that is 18, 19, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I like this artist that's from ours. And you'd be like, okay, we can work with that. Because yeah. you have the same type of mojo that we had or have still because we still keep it. But, yeah, I'm like you on that one. That will be a dope, dope person to, to be around and yeah, Jeremy, you said? Jeremy Lynch. Yeah, Jeremy Lynch. Jeremy. Jeremy. Say yeah. Lord, baby. Oh, Lord. Jeremy. You got to put that Jeremy. <laughs> yes, yes. So before we get out of here, is there any other um, part of you that we want to discuss that hasn't been asked or not? Uh, I think I'm going to leave that up to you. I mean, I've asked many questions, but sometimes I leave it open for those to chime in just in case it wasn't something that I didn't say on because the floor is open. Even though this is an interview and I'm interviewing you, it's an open conversational flow. We know each other. We know of each other, but there's some things I don't know. So like 
you've asked her the one I really don't ask people three words to describe them, which I should do a little bit more. You you reversed the whole hot juices part, and now you got me not wanting to say date <laughs> because it makes sense. Like, who would you want to sit down and chop it up with? That is a better way to form it because you are in a relationship. I can't assume you're not. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you you taught me more. So I rather let that floor be open. If you wanted to chime in on anything that is bothering you, any topical question that wasn't mm. asked, you know, that type of stuff. Okay. So because it's not a question I can ask you like, yeah, what's bother? I can ask you what's bothering you, but I can't pinpoint it. So, yeah, what it might not be bothering you? But if what what ruffles okay. your feather? Okay. Well, we, so we can get into this. Yeah, what yeah, we, ruffles we, we, your feathers? We, yeah, we could uh, crack open a burr. See, you know let's saying? crack open a burr for but, you wine for yeah. me because. Oh, yeah, I drink yeah, some no, sweet yeah, red you should, wine. Yeah, you should. I do a Corona with lime, though. I just don't. Yeah, do it the, the burn ain't necessarily good for the ladies. See, yeah, yeah, and then all know. that yeast and bull yeah, crap and you stuff. You might want to avoid uh, it out there. I'm and, done. You know, <laughs> so crazy. You know, if you got a hot date coming, I'm up, done man, with you. Avoid that. I'm so done with you. That's funny. What <laughs> <laughs> message? You know, not, not that you're asking. Uh, you know, just put it out there. Uh, for just anybody that's trying to, you know, do anything. Any, especially with the way that the the world is having, you know, going right now. Mm-hmm. If you're trying to do anything, don't don't think shit is sweet. Woo! Don't think shit is sweet. You're gonna have to get out here. You're gonna have to get your hands dirty. You're gonna have to have some late nights. You're gonna have to sacrifice mm-hmm. a lot, mm-hmm. a lot. Keep saying it, and you may. You know, end up spending much more time, you know, in the sacrifice phase um, rather than the the reward, Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, just want to encourage anybody who's out there that's trying to position themselves, um, you know, just to be in a better place in life to don't give up. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm here in St. Louis. Been struggling my whole life. There's plenty for all of us. My whole life, yeah. For a lot of us. Mm -hmm. For a lot of us. And, uh, you know, I've been working because I have a I have an end goal in mind. Yes, see? You know, there we go. There we I, go. You know, I have an end goal Thank in you. mind. Chime that in. Yes. You know, and um, things are going to be different for me and the family that I have, mm-hmm. you know. Things are going to be different from anything that I touch. You know, I pride myself on anything that I'm involved in that I come in and I, I transform it for the better. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter if it's a place of business, a job that I'm on or, you know, people that I uh, develop relationships with. Yes. You know, I want to, you know, I strive to provide value, you know, wherever it is that I'm at. And, uh, you know. The first place that it has to be is within my own life, you know. True. And so that's a large factor for me getting up at three a.m. In the, in the morning. morning, you know, and getting out and doing what I need to do. Shoot, you know, <laughs> it's and, like uh, time yeah. in the day is really just that. Like you should think about it: first shift, third, sh- first, second, third shift. Our lives, our days are in those same mojo. So, yeah. Three in the morning is your your first shift. Like you, you get up, or maybe your last. Actually, might be your third shift that's about to run into your first shift yeah. <laughs> type <laughs> deal. But yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm. And then yeah, I'm shaking my head. Yeah, <laughs> in a good way, not a bad yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm like, yeah, you know, because it's you know it's a, a lot. Of, that's a big part of the reason. Uh, you know, I created Soul Shed was to be proactive about changing the stuff that I wanted to see here in the city, you know, and motivating other people to also realize that if you want anything to change for this city or yourself, you're going to have to take it in your own hands. Yes. You know, all of that excuses shit. It it, it, it really, it really ain't no place for it. No, not at all. It really ain't no place for it. And if you a man, (laughs) it's, it's just, it's just not happening. Oh my it's goodness. just not happening. It's just not happening. The world ain't got no sympathy for you. Not at all. 
The justice yeah, system the ain't The people that's away. around you ain't gonna have no damn sympathy Not for at you. All. No way, Jose. So you gonna have to you gonna have to make it happen. <laughs> Captain. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to have to make it happen. Especially if you want to be the captain. <laughs> I like how you... Yeah. I like that. I you like are, that. You're going you to have to... Yeah, you're going to have to get it together, man. You know. I'm like... It is so honorable, honoring, to have to sit down with you after all these years um, and watching you grow um, to who you are becoming because you, you're still growing. So I didn't want to stop it where you are now. And to be able to sit back and look at how you taking your experiences and trying to impact in such a good way. Um, wow. A meditarian type style. You might not think that yet. But <laughs> that's what that is. Um, for what you're doing and what you're going to do, for what you're inspired to do for those who obviously don't see that they can do it themselves. You are that prophet. <laughs> I'm probably like, but it adding a little on. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> for a person, for our caliber to be able to do self-start, to take what we feel and really execute it, it's, like, deep. Like, not everybody can be that way. It takes a lot. So I wanted to, like, chime in on how strong you are to do that, to still have um, the mojo to want to be involved in music, even though your takes and your experiences. <sighs> even though your take, tough. I'm done. <laughs> even though your takes, um might have impacted you. You might have got discouraged. That That's me too. Like, I don't want to just say I'm just talking about you, Jamarco. But to be able to still fight through it and to be able to still inspire is a special individual, which you are. So I am honored to be sitting in front of you, um, looking you in your eyes after all these years. I got to keep saying it on this interview because it shows people too how, how real of a connection that we have. Because, yeah, years ago, you like, oh, I ain't messing with most. Blah, 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 blah. I ain't going to drive to her interview. No, no, no. But you came through. <laughs> you chimed in. It's nothing but pleasant vibes. Um, and it's good to just see where you are and what you're bringing to the culture. So I, I look forward to chiming in. If you need anything, you already know where to reach me um, and how to find me. And if I can support in any way, share posts, all that, you know, I would do it. And it's great. So thank you once again. Before we get out of here, please tell people how to tap in with Jamarco. And everything you got going. All right, all right. So you can find me on social media uh, at Mr. Jamarco, M R J E R M A R C O. Have a uh, primarily on Instagram. I just started a Twitter page back what? up. I had a Twitter page years ago and I deleted it <laughs> because it was just too much foolishness on Twitter. <laughs> but uh, I had I got back on Twitter. Uh, when I started the coding uh, okay. program, okay, because there's a lot of um, just a lot of community just o across all the social medias, really. Um, but I wanted to just tap in specifically to that community, and okay. so I I just follow tech accounts <laughs> 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 and just keep it real simple, and I don't follow nothing else. Um, but I'm Mr. Jamarco on Twitter. Um, you can find Soshed on Facebook. It's a at Soshed STL on Facebook. Instagram and Twitter as well. Okay, okay. Yeah, and the website is the same, soshedstl.com. Com, baby. Soshedstl.com. Do tap in. RSS feed. Sign up for the mailing list. Support them um, and build, be a part of it. Um, donate. Whatever you need to do, just support. Oh, yeah, uh, donate. Yeah, I was just throwing out there. Um, be whatever parts you can be to the change that the music industry needs, that us humans need, that the culture needs, because yeah. culture could be a big realm of different weeds yeah. <laughs> or plants. I should say, I ain't gonna say weeds. Weeds ain't always good. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much, Jamarco, for stopping through. Hey, appreciate you for having me. Stop it through in the high zone. So, we family, we've been family, we've been family for a long time. Um, we got. We'll never not be. We got a whole song. If I never make another one in yeah. my life, I can always look back and be like, hey, I have a song with this gentleman right here. Um, it's our history. It's our our legacy right here, um, the song, which I'm going to take it out with that song, everybody. Hey, but, let's do it. Yeah, I'm going to take it out. See, I'm going gonna gonna to I'm gonna have to play for my lady. Oh, my God. You going to yeah, have it yeah, to yeah. you? going to be like, yeah, check your email. I sent it to you already. Like, play that and be like, man, check this record out. Wow. Like, this is so much history she right at here. Me like, <laughs> thank you once again we family now so i always tell my guests and my my family that we're family so come on back now you're here oh, yeah. 
Yes, indeed. I love it. Everybody right here on, in the hot zone, right out of the home and the heart in the sponsor studio, MPP Studios, mostpreciouspromotes.com. It's your girl, International Most P, taking it out with the song I dropped on my album called Late Night Thoughts featuring Larik at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also Jamarco now, since we're in present time, called I Need. If you want to check it out, go to Bandcamp, go to any place and just look up even Spotify, title. I didn't know I was on title. Oh, until, is it on there? I didn't know I was on title. I didn't know I was on yeah, it's on all of these platforms. Oh, I didn't know it was on title until like 2016. Yeah. <laughs> when title came out. Hey, I didn't know. I checked it title, way title after. Title paying the most money. Yeah, I didn't even know it was on there. So yeah, we could recircle it if you want and start promoting it if you choose to. And then uh, yeah, we can do all that business stuff, whatever letter. But it's out there. It's not just on one platform it's on yeah. all the platforms so everybody yes right here is I Need featuring Larik yours truly late night thoughts on all platforms check it out in the hot zone Thinking about you, dreaming about you, about that time Gotta call you over, let your thoughts unwind I need tonight, I need tonight Waiting for the feeling of the deepest you Giving in the powers where we make it through I need tonight, I need tonight Life without you would be so trashy So I try to make sure we both classy Teaching me lessons about lasting This is deep love, I need the touches You giving up when I'm sad and broken up I don't think about us ever breaking up We too strong, we both laugh when our friends hate on us We too at home, laying down, getting tangled up Hey, you my lead and I'm just following To the stars, we so out of it From the outer end, the four walls screaming Break my back again, grab the magnums You know I like this You so sweet, baby I'm glad to be your lady Speaking these words to you, crazy Getting me wet in the middle, baby You love me, got me so crazy Thinking about you, dreaming about you, about that time Gotta call you over, let your thoughts unwind I need tonight, I need tonight Waiting for the feeling of the deepest you Giving in the powers where we make it through I need tonight I need tonight Baby, baby, are you coming over? So I, so I So I can put it on you We didn't held it long enough Time to pick up speed Got a couple tricks to show you Hitting on my sleeve It's Mr. Incredible Hoping that you're flexible Padded all the windows So we raising up the decibel You can scream loud as you want to Keep it fresh between the lenses Ain't too many things I want do. Ain't no need to find you. Back in the pack, I got you. We can keep it clean while getting dirty in the bathroom. Fuck yeah, I want it. That ass be on it. I fake cut on it. Free ride, get on it. Baby, breathe and bring your body closer. Mmm, good. Feels so good to know ya. Now it's never wrong when you feel so right. Take the nightcap off your bottle when I say goodnight. Thinking about you, dreaming about you, about that time. Gotta call you over, let your thoughts unwind I need tonight, I need tonight Waiting for the feeling of the deepest you Giving in the powers where we make it through I need tonight, I need tonight <laughs> 